Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. Today we're going to look at the difference between paying someone to install a solar system for you and doing it yourself. I'm going to break down the numbers for installing this solar array, all the details, all the hidden costs. Stick around to the end and we'll compare the DIY cost to a quoted cost. You'll be able to see the amount of time it takes to pay it off for each and compare which one makes the most sense for you. So stick around, let's do the numbers. Okay, let's quickly look at the specifications for my system. I have a 9.4 kilowatt solar array. It is made of 25 375 watt panels and I installed it with a screw type system into the ground and then put together the uh, racking system to hold the panels. I have a 7.6 kilowatt inverter slash EV charger. I have an EV charging port here that allows me to charge a vehicle directly from DC power if I would like to, which uh, saves on some efficiency. So let's look at the numbers, the breakdown cost. I'm going to show you five things. One is the solar panel kit cost, the racking system cost, the cost of the additional wiring, and then the permits and fees. Then I'm going to show you a summary and comparison between my uh, DIY install and a professional quoted install. So let's look at the numbers. First of all, the solar panel kit breakdown. I have 25 uh, Mission Solar 375 watt panels at $255 a piece. That comes to $6,375. Next, I had 25 Solar Edge P400 power optimizers. There's one for each panel. They look like this. And they're $79 a piece, which is uh, nearly $2,000 for the optimizers. Then the EV charger uh, inverter, DC AC inverter, 7.6 kilowatt, was $1,875. It is a little bit more expensive because of the EV charging capability, uh, but I figure with the way electric cars are going, I might need it at some point. Then there's several miscellaneous components, uh, a package of stickers. There's like 30 stickers that go all over the place, um, strain relief, a universal unlocking tool for disconnecting the plugs and uh, a grounding bar. It also came with the AC disconnect which makes sure you can disconnect power directly from the grid if you need to do that and then they also included the electrical engineering diagram that I use to get my permit and tells me exactly how everything needs to be wired as well as the size of wiring that's required to achieve uh, the specifications. So altogether that's $10,649 for the solar panel kit that I ordered from Unbound Solar. Then the racking system I ordered from Ready Rack and with shipping it was $1,987 but I had to make a adapter for my post hole digger in order to drive those screws into the ground and that cost me $50. Also, the racking was really only designed for 24 panels and I added a 25th panel hanging off the end here so I had to buy some extra bracing to hold that up so it wouldn't uh, sag or be a problem in the wind. As well as some additional nuts and, and miscellaneous hardware. Then I had underlayment. I used uh, armor lay which was a, a fantastic fabric. I also put on gravel. So with the underlay and the gravel and some fuel to spread it out, that added several hundred dollars to the cost, which to me is worth it because I don't want to have to be mowing and weeding under the array all the time. So the total cost for the racking system came to $2,508. Next, let's look at the wiring breakdown. In order to run power from the array to the building and connect it to the, uh, the grid, I had to buy a number of components. I have this spool of 315 feet of number six solid copper wire. That was $189. I have two spools of 500 feet of 10 gauge wire, which I just cut in half since my run is less than 250 feet. That way I could have two home runs. Uh, those spools were 80 bucks a piece. Then I needed 100 feet of PV connector cable, which connected my solar panels all, or, which connected my solar panel strings together at the array 
and that was $45. And then I needed a PV connector tool to crimp on the connectors, and then a combiner box to combine everything at the array, and then some miscellaneous electric parts that uh, I don't show in the picture there. Then I needed conduit that I would bury in the ground. Conduit, elbows, connectors, miscellaneous parts. That was uh, $140 for the conduit and $15 for fittings and another $45 for miscellaneous fittings and hardware. Then I had to rent a trencher to run that through. That was a $155 rental as well as some fuel in order to run that. Although I did also use it to run a few other trenches around my property to make use of that rental time. I had a 40 amp breaker that I put in my breaker panel at the meter and I had to purchase some wire to run from the inverter to the disconnect and then from the disconnect to the panel so that was another $50 for the wire and $14 for the breaker. All told the extra wiring and materials was just under a thousand at $927. So let's look at uh, briefly at permits and fees. I had a zoning permit for $100, a permit application for $25, $40 for a building fee, $71 for electrical inspection, and $100 for the uh, electrical company engineering fee. So the total there was $336 for all the fees and bits. So when I combine all of the costs of the fees and permits with all of the other costs, that brings my system total to $14,420. When I installed my system, there was a 30% tax rebate, so that gave me $4,326 off. So my total system cost came to $10,094, and my yearly production is just under $1,500, so my payoff is expected to be about 6.8 years. Now, if I didn't have the federal tax rebate, my payoff would be 9.7 years, which is still well within the 25-year warranty of the materials but uh, 6.8 years certainly makes it much more appealing. Now I did get a number of quotes. My highest quote was 34,000 and my lowest negotiated quote was 21,765 which is exactly this system that I installed except it doesn't include the fabric and gravel and the fuel to install that so I added those to it to make it, make it an apples to apples comparison to what I did. So that professional install would be $22,204 with a $6,661 tax rebate. The total cost for the professional install would be $15,543. Now with the $1,488 production, that would come to 10.4 years to pay off or almost 15 years if there were no tax rebate. So pretty significant difference, 6.8 versus 10.4 to have it installed or do it myself. Now I also ran those numbers for the current tax rebate which is 26% just so you can compare it. At a 26% tax rebate my cost would have been 10,671 to install it myself which would increase the payoff period slightly from 6.8 years to 7.2 years and for the professional install it would bump it up to 11 years uh, for the payoff. Now just to review the DIY install was $10,094. The quote install was $15,543. So what I determined is I could save $5,000, almost $5,500 to do it myself, which it seemed worth it for the amount of labor it took to do it myself. Plus the payback going from 6.8 to 10 years is a significant difference. And if I was going to take this risk, I didn't want to wait 10 years to get it paid off. For the $5,000 savings and the three-year improvement and payoff time, I decided it was worth it for me to do it myself. And finally, I, I think you can do it too. I put links in the description and on the screen here so that you can see my step-by-step -step process of how to install your solar array. I also included links for planning your solar array so you can determine how big it needs to be, whether it should be on a roof or on the ground, what's best for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if you're looking for more content, please like and subscribe, and I will try and continue to provide some valuable content for you. So enjoy your solar install.